It's finally here, the Crusader Industries Hercules line. With one of the largest cargo decks in-game, sleek looks and well-armed, the M2 Hercules certainly grabs your attention. But how does it stack up in-game? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable Crusader Industries M2 Hercules. Whilst there are many similarities to the C2 cargo variant, this review will focus specifically on the M2, which is described as a military transport. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll be familiar with the structure of this review. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the two thirds of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. And if you're already subscribed, I'd love to know your thoughts on the new format for the ship tour. Let me know in the comments. Thank you. Part 1. The Ship Tour Firstly, the M2 Hercules is split across two decks. There's a lower deck, which is your cargo or vehicle storage space, and an upper deck, which is everything else. That means that whilst you're on your journey, you're likely to only need to use the upper deck. Getting between those decks is via either an elevator, which also allows you to leave the ship, or a ladder between the two decks. There are three entry points into the M2 Hercules. Firstly, you could extend either the front or rear ramp, and simply walk or drive up into the expansive cargo bay. Alternatively, there's that elevator, which can be called from beneath the ship, which can take you between the surface, the cargo deck, or the crew deck. The elevator seems a little buggy in the current patch, meaning it arrives before the animation has fully played through. As the majority of crew activities happen in the top deck, it makes sense to start the tour there. Upon either climbing the ladder or riding the elevator, you'll be on the port side of the ship. There's a central bank of storage, a walking space on both the port and starboard sides, and three crossing points, a walking space at the front, and two walkway bridges across the central hump. Those storage bins contain variously components, or even some personal inventory storage, which is currently usable and is a nice feature. At the back of this large space are visual representations of the engines, as well as further component access built into the walls. All in all, this is a really clever and stylish way of hiding some of the inner gubbins of the ship, while still providing access to them for engineer or repair style gameplay in the future. Sticking with the port side of the ship for now, which is the same side as the elevator and ladder, there are two doors which lead off this main room. Both are marked auxiliary crew, and both lead to the same room. This room has 12 dropship style seats for the crew of the Tonks aboard. There's also one toilet, shared between 12 marines, which is probably a red flag. To the side of this room, and at the back of the port side of the Hercules, is an armoury. There's a lot of space for various weapons and armour pieces, which makes sense as the M2 Hercules is described as a military transport. Crossing over to the starboard side of the ship, there are another two doors which are marked habitation. Similarly to the auxiliary crew, both of these doors lead to the same room, which contains bunks for the three bridge crew members, two desks for completing all your customs paperwork, and another couple of integrated bathroom cupboards, and some cupboards for your assorted belongings. And at the front of the M2 Hercules is the bridge, but to get there you have to go through two different corridors containing a mix of escape pods and component access, all blended into the walls. The bridge itself has three seats, one for the pilot, one for the co-pilot who doubles up as a remote gunner, and one for the gunner operator. 
For a small crew like this, it's nice having everyone all in one place together. There's a console between the pilot and co-pilot which includes a space for a sidearm, and the cockpit features detailed, individually lit buttons and switches, which is reminiscent of an airline cockpit. Going down a deck, the lower deck is the cargo deck. There's interchangeably 522 units of cargo storage, or storage for a plethora of ground or smaller space vehicles. Each of the ramps has individual controls, meaning you can deploy either of them, or you could deploy them both for the full drive-on, drive-off experience. It's worth adding that the upper deck is airlocked, with a small airlock on the ladder and the elevator acting as a seal, so the people upstairs should still be able to breathe even if you've got the big doors open. Part 2 combat performance. Whilst the M2 comes armed with 8 size 4 weapons, only 2 of those are directly controlled by the pilot. By default those are 2 ballistic gatling guns on gimbals, blended into the nose of the Hercules. You can switch those out for fixed size 5 weapons, although you might find that aiming becomes a challenge. The other six weapons, by default M6A laser cannons, are spread across three remote turrets. One beneath the nose, one at the base of the Hercules, and one at the back up top. The firing arcs for those turrets are fairly limited. For the astute amongst you, you'll notice that there are three remote turrets, but only two gunner seats, and that's because the rear turrets are both linked. The M2 doesn't come armed with any missiles at all, which initially seems a surprising choice, but could be explained by the fact that this is a military transport ship, and that the weaponry is there more for defending itself than employing offensive action. That said, the M2 does just fine with offensive action. Because the weapons are fairly large, against smaller to medium sized targets the M2 can engage at range, and hopefully score a kill before the target gets too close. If you do get into a merge with an enemy, you can expect the more sluggish nature of this ship to catch up with you, even with your turret gunners working hard, so it's best to try to engage at long range. Defensively, with two military grade size 3 shield generators, the M2 can take a surprising amount of damage. That's the same size shield generator that you'd find on a Caterpillar, Starfarer or 600i, but twice as many. That's hammerhead level of shielding, and that makes the M2 really quite a tough nut to crack at the moment, and that's without any armour mechanics to speak of. Part 3. Handling and Visibility So, you're probably drawn first to the thin sliver of cockpit window that this ship offers. It's not great, but equally it's not as bad as you might think, especially once you're drawn fully forward into the pilot's chair. And, to be fair to the M2, this is a cargo hauler, not a luxury yacht, so the cockpit visibility certainly feels in line with what you might expect. The real challenge is rear visibility, as you're right at the front of what you know is a big ship, so when you're assigned hangar bays to land in, and you know you're going to need to reverse out, there's nothing for it other than trying to keep as straight as level as possible, but it's an unnerving experience. Thankfully, despite being a cargo hauler, the M2 Hercules flies fairly well. It's not the most nimble ship you'll fly, remember, this thing hauls 500 plus units of cargo, but it compares favourably to a Caterpillar. At 133 meters per second, it's also faster than the Caterpillar, which is one of the real selling points for this ship. The inclusion of VTOL engines gives a level of comfort and control within atmosphere, which is good, because if you can land this ship without nose scraping the floor, you deserve a medal. The rearward placement of the landing gear on the Constellation series made it prone to wobbling on landing, and the M2 Hercules has the same problem in triplicate. 
The top tip seems to be to continue to apply downward strafe whilst also gently lifting the nose back on landing, but after weeks of practice it's still difficult. Other than that, the M2 is actually really nice to fly, especially as a cargo hauler of this stature. The nose moves fairly responsively, and although it does carry a little momentum in turns, you get used to it. Plus, the military grade components are stock mean you can push a fair amount of afterburner before getting into trouble from the flight computer. And the stock quantum drive is actually pretty good. Moreover, the range on the M2 is insane. With over 88,000 quantum fuel, it's rare that you'll need to refuel. Which is good, because it takes a long, long time. Part 4 Operating Costs Starting with repair and refuel, this is a fairly large ship, and so it's not the cheapest to refuel. You might reasonably expect four figure bills, or even well into five figures if you don't refuel regularly. And because of the long refuel timer, you may want to refuel regularly, including queuing up the request whilst you leave the ship to sell your cargo. If you're lucky, it'll be done by the time you're home. As you might expect though, the C2 has lots of options for making that money back. Whilst the 522 SCU of cargo storage is less than the C2, it's in the same ballpark as the Carrack or Caterpillar, who were the previous kings of cargo hauling. It's also more than sufficient to turn a reasonable profit in-game at the moment. There's obviously ample internal storage space for any manner of delivery type mission, and even combat contracts are feasible with the strong defensive properties of the M2 and the larger weapon size making quick work of many of the missions out there. You could even use it as an overkill storage option for rock mining rovers, with so much cargo space available to chain together either multiple miners worth of haul or one very long caffeine fueled trip. Part 5 The Verdict one of the reasons that many people are excited about this ship is for the large cargo bay, partly for hauling cargo, but also for hauling all manner of vehicles. You might already have seen videos of people using this ship as a snub carrier, and that expansive cargo bay really doesn't disappoint. The drive on, drive off functionality is great, and visually looks impressive too. It's worth adding, the rear of the cargo deck is wider than the front, so if you're really pushing the envelope of what fits in there, you may need to be prepared to reverse off. The ship itself performs well against a range of tasks, which isn't unusual for a newly flyable ship, but the inclusion of military grade hardware as stock truly helps the M2 to be a great all rounder. The big challenger for the M2 isn't the traditional Caterpillar, nor the mighty Carrack, but her little sibling, the C2. Or maybe it should be bigger sibling, since the C2 has considerably more cargo capacity, and that's for a cheaper price. And talking price, you'd have to be prepared to pay $400 to $500 depending on war bond or CCU chains. And as a newly flyable ship, there's no in-game price yet either. So why might you opt for the M2 over the C2? Well, the obvious difference is the extra seat for the extra gun turret, which really doesn't make up for the value difference. Or perhaps it's for the military grade components as stock. For the theory crafters out there, the interesting idea is that it's for something that isn't really in-game yet, which is heavy armour, the potential value in keeping you safe. Whether that's worth the difference in price is up to you. This is one of only three Star Citizen ships that I've actually paid for, and I personally opted for the M2 variant specifically for the extra crew spot as well as the heavier armament. But for many solo players seeking to operate in more peaceful space, the cheaper C2 could be a really good choice too. If, if, if you're willing to spend that much on a virtual ship. 
It's still a big price tag for a video game, and although the ships are really competitive in-game at the moment, eventually we'll be able to unlock it all in the game. But do you agree? Have you been flying the Hercules in the latest patch? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd press that like button. You might also be interested in my review of the Drake Caterpillar as an alternative. Otherwise, thank you for watching.